But anyway, uh, let's just talk about Edwin Van Assel. I know it's not something you've got a lot of interest in, so fair enough. I understand your lack of real, you know, passion about this topic. But it's a topic I'm very passionate about because United don't have a director of football. We've got a chief executive in Ed Woodward, who's an ex freaking banker, who uh, who is overseeing all football affairs at Manchester United. It doesn't seem right to me, but that's what's going on. Now, he's doing a good job for the Glazers in the terms of he's just the Glazers' yes men. Yes, man, he's also capable of brokering all these financial deals, these commercial deals, these car deals, noodle deals, because he is a financial man. He has showed some astuteness at managing uh, the financial deals at Manchester United very well. That is what he should be doing in the future, a financial advisor or in a financial role at the club, maybe a commercial deal, man, whatever you want to say. But he should not be overseeing transfers. He should not be deciding players' ins, players' outs, managers' appointments, things like that. He's not a football man. That's just my personal opinion. And I think that somebody like Edwin van der Sar, who, in, just forget the United stuff, is just better equipped for the job. He's got the contacts in football. He's got the respect in football. He's got the ability to uh, understand what a football club needs. If you look at what he's done at Ajax, he's partly responsible for their resurgence in recent years. A few years ago, Ajax were nowhere. You know, they'd had a drop-off. Football goes in cycles. But, you know, he, he Ajax has really come back to the fore in the last couple of seasons. And it's a lot down to, I think, Edwin van der Sar in terms of, you know, just potential potential players coming into the club, recruitment, scouting, um, transfer deals, tran you know, ins and outs, getting the best for the club. He's done a very, very good job for Ajax. So to me, he would be an ideal candidate to come in and be Manchester United's director of football. Forget that he's an ex-club legend, saved a freaking penalty in the Champions League final, you know, and all that stuff. He's just better equipped to the job than Ed Woodward. Ed Woodward should not be doing that. I mean, what do you think about that, Henry? Do you think I'm off base there? It just from an outsider point of view, does Woodward seem to be doing a good job? Because to me, he just doesn't. Well, the way I see it, I mean, if Van der Sar was that good for Ajax, then why didn't he just step up, step, step up and get between the goalposts when he played Tottenham Hotspur and we knocked them out of the Champions League? You know what I'm saying? Well, he'd probably still be good enough to do that, to be fair. He probably would be, but why isn't he? You know what I mean? Because he's he retired, should've. mate. He should have. He's retired. Ah, no, he, you know, he's I, I, honestly, he do. He still could do a good job. Honestly, oh, I bet he would that. as well. Yeah, goalkeeper's the one position I suppose where you can just keep playing up to a good standard for a bit longer. You often see forty-year-old goalkeepers still bossing it. People like Buffon. So yeah, I totally agree. But um, well, how old is Van der Sar now? Ah, he's probably like Edwin. forty-six, forty-seven, something like that. I'd say so. I'm not even sure. But anyway, we're not talking about signing Edwin Van der Sar as a replacement for David De Gea. We're talking about well, signing talking him to, talking as a replacement about for Woodward. Talking in terms of as a, a, direct, a director of football, mm. will, would he be able to have a part at Manchester United? Well, do you know what? I really don't know is the answer. I'm not just <laughs> going to sit here and spout a lot of bullshit. I don't know how he's getting on at Ajax. Very it's interesting just well, to listen yeah. to you right there. Well, um, I like you know yourself, guy. I he seems all right. Well you, know, he's, you know, he's always a proper professional. Um, if he has had, if he has had, uh, you know, in, in, an influence on on Ajax, uh, recent successes, which they have been recent successes, then fair play to the man. But is he the right fit for for Manchester United right now? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, what you need to do is you need to look at the the heyday. You need to look at when Fergie was there and you were having the best of times. Who who did he have around him? David Gill. You had Mike Feeling. David Gill was Mike the chief Feeling exec. There now. So David Gill was the chief exec, did a great job, to be fair. Like, you know, before... So what's happened to him? Well, he retired. He left at the same time Sir Alex Ferguson left. So it was like a changing of the guard at that time. And since then, Woodward's come in and done a piss poor job. I mean, if we could go back and get David Gill, it'd be absolutely unreal. But we can't. And unfortunately, we've got Ed Woodward. I mean, I wanted to talk about it just because I think that it's clear that Ed Woodward's not doing a great job at United in terms of recruitment, right. in terms of getting what's players he done wrong, gone. Then? Well, what's, he, what's he done wrong then? Highlight the, the for a neutral, don't bore me, mm. the Manchester United bullshit. 
but just tell me well, the main things that he's done wrong. The top three things okay, so, that he's he's fucked up. Okay, with. so he's completely ruined the wage structure at the club, right? By allowing the signing of players like Alexis Sanchez on for four hundred and fifty thousand a week and stuff like that. Like it belittles the rest of the team. It's probably a large reason why players like Ander Herrera wanted more money and left when he wasn't going to get that extra money. So that's that sort of undermined the yeah, squad. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. That, that is that's bad great, financial great, management. Great first reason. Yeah, yeah, bad financial management, fair, and that has yeah. implications on the squad it has implications on future signings people know if Alexis Sanchez is on that sort of money well maybe we can squeeze a bit more out of Manchester United it's a really bad move you should have a ceiling and you should stick to it and he didn't do that on this instance and it has had a knock-on effect um, I also think that um, you know it's just some some of the some of the commercial deals that we've made it's not really looking for the best interest of the club Manchester United you know floating on the stock exchange or getting all these uh deals in with um you know just just random freaking companies with noodle companies and this sort of stuff i mean it's not really necessary it doesn't match the ethos of manchester united which is do, do you know a what? traditional just, family just quickly, club just, it's like if they change the stadium quickly, name, to stop you on. just to quickly stop you on i know you're gonna get onto your third one and i'll give you a bit of time i've got to more think than three to be fair didn't already have it ready <laughs> i've got more than okay. three but yeah well, actually, as you know i am based in china right now i've got a friend out here that's not currently here he's actually in the uk He's going to be at a press conference. I've already told the pig about this. He's going to be at a major pre press conference, I believe, on the 16th of this month, which is literally, what, a couple of days' time now. Um, and, you know, he's representing Yabo Sports, which I, I believe is a, a Chinese uh, sport company. I, I don't know exactly what, what they do as a company. I don't know the ins and outs of it. But I have... An insider, I have a friend that's going to, going to be at that press conference. He's going to be meeting players. He's going to be uh, speaking to people. He's already said that he's going to try to generate a little bit of a little bit of material for the Pig and the Hen show. So hopefully we'll keep you guys updated. But you know, if we can get something Are for next week... Are we breaking this on the show, um, mate? Are we? What's I going will... on here? What's this press conference about then, mate? All I know, all, all I know is what I've told you. I've already told you, Pig. You know, don't put me on the spot. Here. <laughs> but there's a press conference. I mean, he's already stood on the stage with Steven Gerrard, right? I know well, that's, that's not right. United yeah. related, but this is this is a, because everybody's fucking signing up with this Yabo Sports. Right. Well, it's not just Manchester United, but this, this is obviously a major Chinese sports company. And as I said, I don't know the ins and outs of what Yabo Sports do, mm. but. He stood on the stage of Gerard. Do you know what I said to him? I messaged him. I said, do you know what I would have said to Gerard if I stood next to him whilst shaking his hand, smiling at the cameras? I would have said, careful you don't slip, mate. Yeah, same That's here. what I would have said, Same here, mate. mate. <laughs> That's what I would have said. And he didn't. Do you know what no, I mean? No, no, that is a missed opportunity, mate. I, do you know how, how funny? We've got a similar minds, mate, because I've always thought if I ever see Stephen Gerrard, I'm going to go, watch out for that banana skin over there. Don't slip. <laughs> And well, try and film that's it. What, and that's film what that I'm shit. getting at. <laughs> but, um, exactly. So shout out to my friend. He's in the UK right now. He's doing the business, doing his job, but he's loving it. What a great job, you know. And um, we'll keep you informed. Me and the pig will keep you informed. That's it, whenever there's whatever, breaking news. We can get some pictures over. I mean, I've got the picture of him with Stephen Gerrard, so I'll send that to you. We can, you know, nobody, nobody really wants gives to see a that. Shit, about that. Nobody but wants to see that. If you want to see United, bullshit, tell him to get some videos, mate. Some tell that. him to get some little video clips. That is actually what we could use. Like that would be good. If you could get some video clips of some, pre or even just record the press conference, and I can put it on my channel, mate. Hundred percent. Tell him to do that. We'll send him a little bit of cash. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, hook you, him, I'll hook you up with yeah, him. Well, you, I'll just, you up with you him. just ask That's him. That's the to, best bet. Yeah, it? but just ask him to film it, mate. Film as much stuff as you can. You know, he's your mate. <laughs> but well, uh, I only met him a few times. He seems all right. Nice, yeah. I mean, I hope he's my mate. <laughs> but um, anyway, to go back onto the points about Ed Wood. Sorry, third point, third point. Third point. So yeah, commercial deals and, and just having more of a vested interest in that compared to maybe. Some of the other footballing issues, like actually Wood improving the side. Why is Woodward shit? Right, next one. He's basically just a complete freaking yes man for the Glazers, isn't he? That's what he is. Like, he, his, 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 his 
bottom line, his um, interest is just to please and appease the Glazers, to bring in f money into the club. We're not looking at, he's not looking at paying off the debt that Manchester United have. He's just looking at using Manchester United's brand to generate money for the Glazers, basically, to make that money for them. That is what seems to be going on, because if you look at the debt that they bought the club with and how much debt United are still in right now, there's not much difference, mate. It's not like we've paid a lot of that debt back. We're still hundreds of millions, 600 million in debt or something ridiculous like that. So that's one major thing. There's been a lot of time that he's been at the club. These financial deals, we've seen a vast amount of them. Chevrolet and you're talking about these Jabo Sports. And, and it doesn't surprise me, all these other uh, deals that we have broken. And we're still in the same amount of shit debt-wise. That's completely wrong. Um, the, the recruit just I know you only asked for three, but I'm just going to go on to the fourth, mate. The recruitment has been shite. I know we've mentioned it a bit about Alexis Sanchez, but if you're talking about players in, players out, we're constantly getting bent over the barrel. We're currently playing, play, paying Alexis Sanchez to go and play for Inter Milan, and we're paying him to do that. That just, just, just shows you how shit the recruitment has been at United. Lukaku, our big money signing a couple of years ago, sold him off already. Didn't work out. Um, you know, it's just... And, and not only that, the lack of recruitment if we had somebody there who was actually a director of football who had united's best interests at heart you would have seen a few more players coming in in this last summer transfer window because we were 32 points behind fucking city that's why we would have spent a lot more and strengthened the squad a lot more but did he do that did he fight our cause to the glazers did he get the players through the door no just did the bare minimum that's what that twat Woodward does. He just does the bare minimum on the football pitch for United to keep us ticking over. Don't really give a shit anymore if we get into the Champions League. Let's just shrink back. Let's just get rid of some of the high pairs. Let's, let's cull our expenditure and let's keep this United club profitable for the Glazers. That's what it seems to be for me. So that's the main problems I have with Ed Woodward. I'd like to see him gone. I'd like to see somebody else come in who's, who's right for the job. Forget that they're an ex-Red. Just somebody who's right for the job, who knows... All the, all the thing is, can you blame him? Surely it's the fault of the Glazers. It's like, basically, the Glazers have got this guy in and they said, this is what we want you to do. And he's probably, he's probably getting 10 out of 10. He's getting a fucking A star. You know, he's passing with merit mm. or distinction every step of the way because that's what they want him to do. So, I mean, can you blame him? End of the day, he's just a working man. Mm. He's, he's probably got kids. He's got a family. That's his job. That's what the Glazers want him to do. That's what he's doing. So is it not the fault of the Glazers? Primarily. just look at Woodward I agree, and think, mate. Prick? I agree. Primarily, it is the fault of the Glazers, absolutely. He's just a yes man for the Glazers, but he is the he's man He's doing a spot-on job. He's, he's the chief exec. He's doing a spot-on job in terms of what the Glazers want. Yes, he is. But he's not doing a spot-on job for what United want or the fans. Like, check this comment out from Rincon here. Of course here. not. He comments and but says... But United's not paying him. The Glazers are paying him. Absolutely. But we've got a comment here from Rincon I just want to read out. It's very true. He says, there's so many more than three reasons. We still have $800 million in debt. Not spent enough the last two windows. Cares more about sponsorship. Old Trafford needs renovating. There was a video the other day of the bloody roof at Old Trafford leaking through, mate. So, there's... um. Wow. There, there's definitely some problems. Used to be, used to be one of the top three, if not, you know, if not the best stadium in the whole world. At some mm, well, point, it's not so cutting edge Far anymore. Far from it now. Put it that way. Far from it now. Yes, honestly. I mean, Rincon. He also says Woodward and Glazers just care about top four to fulfil sponsorships and keep profits rolling in. They don't give a fuck about making the squad that can compete with City and Liverpool. Yeah, good comments there. I really do agree entirely with you there, Rincon. Um, what well, another thing? You know, it's just like, yes, the, the problem I have with a director of football coming in as well, it's like, is he really going to get that? Is he really going to get that final say? The probability is not. It's just the sort of thing to me, it seems like the Glazers who are keeping United in debt and just servicing this debt and making United. Uh, crikey, mate, it's a freaking monsoon on the go out there. What's going on? What? What? Can you hear it? Pissing I've, down, I've, eh? I've got in-ear headphones. Trying to just ignore oh, it, play. straighten on the show. Yeah. What's going on? It just on? sounds like it's absolutely pissing down. Good call going inside, I reckon, mate. <laughs> it's just windy. I mean, there's the storm is coming. It's not hit yet. You can see occasional flash in the sky. I'm dedicated to the pick in the hand, mate. It, mate. I'm, I am loving it. But yeah. So another thing, it's like Woodward. He's um, is he going to still have the final say? Let's say the Glazers just appoint a director of football just to appease the fans, if you like, to give the fans what they think that we want. 
The fact is they're still going to run the club how they see fit. They're still going to have that wood, that Woodward yes man there. So does it just become, oh, the director of football's just there for window show, for window dressing, basically? He's not really a director of football, because that's the problem I'd have. And you know, if I'm being brutally honest, I think if they did appoint a director of football, that's what it would be. It would just be window dressing to show the fans, yeah, we are actually trying to do something here. We are trying to compete with the other teams around Europe, the top teams who do have directors of football. Some of them have multiple ones, so we better have one. But really, it's going to be that freaking potato head twat Woodward still making all the key decisions, and he's just going to do what we tell him basically he's going to generate the financial deals i understand what you're saying and yeah everything you said is right but there's no point pointing at the message man woodward is just a message man for the glazers he's he's, he's, he's still he's still got a key role at the club like his ins and outs transfers listening to what they want him to do and they keep him there because they're more than happy with what he's doing Mm. If, if you you said Rincon has said more than four or five points of why Woodward is not good for Manchester United, and yet he keeps a job. Why? Because the Glazers are more than happy with him. They are over the moon with the job that he's doing there. And you're talking about Van der Sar coming in. You're talking about this. You're talking about that. And it might appease the fans a little bit. That sounds interesting. Van der Sar coming in, etc. But the key problem of this is the Glazers. It's time now for the Pig and the Hen. Pig and the Hen Show. Pig and the Hen Show.